Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, we're taking a look at what the 16 personalities do to lash out when under extreme stress or anxiety. And the truth is, sometimes we can all experience these massive tidal waves, which cause uh, extreme shifts in our behavior from our dominant function to our seventh function. Yes, while the fourth function, the inferior function, tends to manage stress to a degree, if the stress becomes overwhelming or too much, we tend to switch to the seventh function, or rather, we tend to run away from the seventh function. What that means is uh, we act in a way that is very opposite of the intentions of the seventh function. And so understanding this, you will understand the ways you gain stress release and escape. And also what you can do about it. So let's start with the INFJ and the ISFJ. The INFJ and ISFJ become the opposite of aggressive under stress and extreme anxiety and turmoil. That means they become self-sabotaging, martyr-like, and very, very much submissive to their environment. They become meek and they give up and yielding. They yield their own interests and their own feelings and their own needs completely to the other person or to their environment. Uh, they give up on any form of power and control and influence in the world. In these situations, having people around them that can validate their needs and can say, hey, actually, I can't accept this and I don't want to take that. And I think that you really need this. And I think this is really important for you. So I'm not going to accept that. Uh, people around them that can recognize martyr-like tendencies and say, hey, it seems like you're really upset about this. Uh, are you okay? Like, is there anything I can do for you? People that validate you. This, these things are super important for an INFJ and an ISFJ. When talking with an ENFJ or an ENTJ under extreme stress, you might notice, for example, that they are unusually irresponsible. ENFJs and ENTJs are hyper-responsive for the tribe and for helping others and for working and engaging in projects and things for other people. And under extreme stress and to escape from stress, they become often very impulsive. They do things they normally wouldn't. They engage in and do and say things they otherwise yeah, would never do. So in these situations, if you can provide a responsible figure for them, a dependable figure for them, if you can be somebody they can rest on and uh, let go of their responsibilities for, somebody that can take care of their life and can take care of things that they have in their life that are going on, uh, that can be really positive. So when they collapse and when they break, which they sometimes do, then having somebody around that can pick things up for them and can make sure that they're taken care of, that's very positive and reassuring. When you're an INTJ or an ISTJ, it's very common to struggle with a sense of paranoia. There can be a feeling like you never fit in anywhere, nobody likes you, everyone's against you, everyone's always disagreeing with you, everyone's always upset with you. So in these situations, as an INTJ or an ISTJ, it's really important to feel understood and accepted and validated. So if, as a friend of an INTJ or an ISTJ, you can provide them with a sense of reassurance. Hey, I like you a lot, I care about you, I want to be there for you, I want to help you. These kind of things can be very positive for the INTJ or an ISTJ. When you're an ESFP or an ENFP, it's very common to detach from problems and pretend like everything is okay when it's not. Ignoring interrupted thinking, you'll pretend like there are no problems in your life, everything's perfect, everything's great, and you're just focused on what's next, the new exciting thing that will fix everything and uh, help you get away from all those problems that you have in your life. But it's not helpful, it's not healthy, it's not going to make things better. You can't run away from things, you can only run towards things. And so uh, that's something you have to think about. If you have friends around you that in these situations can help you manage your problems and make you aware of it, they, uh, let's, that sounds like a really good idea, but let's first sit down and take care of this together. Let's uh, work this out. Let's just, I so see that you're struggling with this. And let's take care time to address this together before we move on. That's really positive and beneficial. As an INTP or an INFP, it's very common to gain stress release by simply detaching from extroverted sensing, running away from the world, turning off social media, turning off your phone, and becoming uncommunicative and irresponsible to other people. So INFPs and INTPs often feel a need to run away and escape in these situations. So if you can provide them with comfortable spaces for them to be alone or to be quiet and to give them time to decompress and decompose, uh, that can be very positive. Also respecting their need for alone time and privacy and also reminding them that, hey, I'll be here for you when you need to me and I miss you and I look forward to talking to you again later. Like these kind of things can be positive so that they know that, hey, there are people around them that are there for them and will listen to them and hear them out if they want to, but they don't need to, they don't feel forced to, they can, only, they can come up to surface when they need to and are available. 
ISTPs and ISFPs become in stress or for stress release hyper inflexible. They run away from change and extroverted intuition. So in these situations, it's very important to, that people around them give them time to adjust and to slowly adjust to new change. Also people that can help them work through what if scenarios and people that can help them understand and see what's happening and can help them solve and respond to these kind of things. As an ESTJ or an ESFJ, it's very common to cling to what's familiar, what is, what they know, to refuse to see others' perspectives and viewpoints. It's easy to get stuck in how you see the world and to hold on to your own viewpoint and perspective and to ignore interrupted intuition and to ignore and run away from the unknown and unfamiliar to hold on to just what you know. But there is no escape here in a sense. Uh, so it's very important for people around them to give them time to take in and process new information. People, an ESTJ or an ESFJ might not understand immediately what they, you are trying to say, but if you give them time to process and sift through it and also help them by making it more clear and concrete for them uh, what you want and what it is you need, uh, that can be really helpful for them to translate and to understand. So don't rush them to understand your viewpoint or see things your way. Give them time to adjust to what you're saying and to hear and interpret and process. We all struggle with stress release, so I tend to advocate people finding healthy outlets on a daily basis to express negative feelings. Uh, we all need to be allowed to say negative things and to express anxiety and stress and tension. As you might have noticed in some of my videos, I can sometimes uh, say uh, hyper self-deprecatory things and uh, I can sometimes uh, engage in very sarcastic uh, humor uh, about myself and uh, yeah, sometimes that is a way for me to uh, express negativity and frustrations that I might have in my life. I try to keep that away from you guys, but uh, it comes to the surface in all of us. And uh, I, in some ways, I kind of want to just be an authentic role model as well. And to, yeah, show you guys that my life is not always sunshine and roses. And yeah, I also have my share of stressors and worries and anxieties like all of you. And uh, yeah, I just want to work together with all of you to make sure that you all feel good. Thank you so much for watching and if you want to learn more about stress release and stress buildup and flow, check out the introduction to the flow code available for all patrons on patreon.com slash erictor. It's just like 10 pages, so I think you can manage that. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.